Hello, Shessos. Welcome to another video where we are going to be discussing the broadside getting back core. Now, broadsides for us have never really been in the meta, even when they were released in 9th edition and everybody was sort of talking about them. Uh, Richard Siegler famously went on to say that he thought the broadsides were a bait pick, and it kind of turned out that they were, even though GW nerfed them into the ground. Even at the place that they were at, we noticed with the space that the Codex was in on release that there were many, 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 many other things that were going to be the boogeymen of the Tau Force. Uh, biggest thing among that is the Crisis Suits, which were severely undercosted. We hadn't had the indirect nerfs just yet, so Broadsides with SMS was particularly good. Uh, but everybody being worried about the Rail Rifle and everything else, and then being able to stack buffs and whatever turned out to not be as dangerous and competitive as people would have liked to have made on that it was. Now, why then am I making a video about broadsides getting core back in the current iteration of the game? Well, as I said in that intro, a couple of things have changed. Crisis suits are no longer a dime a dozen with paying nothing for triple plasma rifles. We have had an out of uh, line of sight nerf where all indirect, including now Astra Militarum, are suffering a ballistic skill modifier, and that is not to be confused with a hit modifier, as you can now effectively get minus two as your ballistic skill goes to five, and you can get minus one with broadsides hitting on sixes without Barkalite support, uh, as well as being affected by things like lightning fast reactions from Eldari where if you've got a plus one and they've got a neg one, then you're still hitting on fives. If you're firing across dense and they use lightning fast reactions, then you're hitting on sixes because they have a negative two to your positive one. Now, all of that, you know, relatively long-winded to say that broadsides are in a different position and our army is in a different position. There are a lot of things that have copped nerfs over the course of this entire edition and GW's effort to balance us. And really, I don't think the broadsides getting core back is... Uh, I think it's it's too little too late. I think that they copped a lot of unnecessary changes. And the reason I say that is because I think this was one of the instances of GW reacting to community perception, even though the community had no idea what they were talking about at the time. Everybody was so worried about it, but it turned out that the broadsides weren't the worst thing that was happening within our book. So getting this back now is good, and I think that they find a place. And I'm actually going to be running them in one of my lists, but I don't think that they fill the role that a lot of people are expecting them to. I've seen a lot of people on Reddit and Facebook and whatever else, uh, and even within my own Discord, talking about broadsides, having, you know, nine of them with Shadow Sun and with Dark Strider and with Long Strike and with all these different things and all these drone attachments and whatever else. I think that's actually a misplay from all those people. And I'll get into why. First and foremost, thank you to all of my uh, patrons who make these videos possible. Stick around to the end of the video to find out how you can support me more. Uh, congratulations to one of my patrons, Taka, who has won the Operative Umbral 6 giveaway. Uh, thank you so much for the entry and the alteration of the, the picture that I put in there. Uh, me and the missus had a good laugh over that. Uh, if you would like to be a part of any of the additional giveaways and whatever else that we're doing, make sure you head down to the Patreon link in the description. Uh, also, I finally own a Ghost Kill, because uh, the, the very same, and now that I say it, not related to him winning the giveaway. He sent this before that, uh, but I received a Ghost Kill. So now uh, we are actually going to be having take two of win an event with a ghost kill in my list, which we're going to be doing at the Dice Arcade RTT, which is going to be at the end of this month. There'll be a little bit of coverage for that, so make sure you're subscribed. Uh, also, we are going to be running a GT. Um, I've put down the plans. Uh, we have a venue in mind. I've got somebody who's already run a very, very successful event that's going to be working closely with me, which is uh, the Art of Wars uh, coach Alex Anglazos. Really, really excited about this one. Um, I'm going to be trying to pack as much as I can into it. Obviously, it's going to be run in Australia. Uh, but if you would be interested in coming to this GT, make sure that you subscribe to the channel or head to the Patreon to get into the Discord where I'm going to be discussing a lot of that stuff in advance. Obviously, tickets will go live uh, just the same for everybody else. Uh, and we'll be advertising all over Facebook and whatever. But uh, yeah, really excited. Really, really excited to be running an event. Anyway, into the video. 
So, broadsides in my mind, in the current meta that we're seeing, do not fill the same role as people are wanting them to as Crisis Suits or Fisher Fury or any of the things that sort of you invest a lot of points into to go and win the game. Now, even especially having played a very crisis heavy list recently, I didn't really have like I still I still went two and one at a relatively competitive event, but I did find that I had to give up so much of the board, and if I wasn't able to table my opponents as well as I could, then you know it just I, I auto lost, and this came into play against uh, Nathan Princey, who is or Princey is something. <laughs> Uh, but the same guy that I played at Masters uh, end of last year. And because his custodies were very, 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 very durable, because I wasn't able to table him, I wasn't able to win the game. Whereas if I was playing a Fish Fury list, I would have been able to box him into his deployment zone and he never would have left. And he would have just auto-lost because I was everywhere. Um, so broadsides for me fill the same role that we found Riptides filling in our current list. Because if you remember, back to when broadsides were the scary thing that everybody was complaining about and copped their nerfs, Riptides also were not in the meta. We weren't taking them for months after the broadside changes. And so now I think that because of that shift in how the game is being played, broadsides have their place as backfield objective holders, long range fire support, and I am in my list investing very, very little into anything to do with them, including buffs and whatever else. Core is great because it gives them reroll ones from commanders. And generally speaking, I have fallen in love with the Enforcer Commander, which is typically very slow uh, and sort of anchors the center of the board. And it's not hard to keep him within six inches of some broadsides that I want to have reroll ones. And so it means that I've got something that can fill the role of Riptides. And even though it doesn't have... Fire and Fade, it doesn't have, you know, whatever else. It's benefiting from the ethereal fill no pain, which is fantastic. And that takes the place of the Riptide having to sort of decide whether it's going to go Fire and Fade or it's going to go the extra shots or it's going to go the fill no pain. But what it also means is that it can, because they're infantry, they can benefit from light cover. So I can have them standing over the top of an objective, uh, second floor of a building or just touching the building or whatever, so they're seeing through it. And all of them are on a one-up armor save. And because they're eight wounds, if you've got a three-man broadside unit and somebody's like, okay, cool, I've got to chew through 24 wounds at the back there, that's more than shooting at a storm surge. And even though you don't have an invulnerable save, you then make your opponent start to go, okay, he's got two hammerheads out there because I'm running two. And he's got three devil fish in my face because he's Borkan. I'm running Borkan. All of my stuff, if I shoot non-dedicated anti-tank weaponry at him, then all of it's getting its strength reduced by one. So at best, I'm wounding on fives. So if I send my anti-tank stuff at the broadsides, I don't have stuff for the other platforms that are out there. If I ignore the broadsides, they're going to be shooting me with the rail rifles. Now, I've chosen with my broadsides to go the uh, advanced targeting system and the velocity tracker. I think that that is just really, really good consistency for them. Uh, even though they're strength 9 and they're going to be wounding most things on 2s and 3s, I still think that auto-wounding 6s is really, really great. And the reason for that is that it skips an entire wound step. I cannot tell you the number of times that it has happened to me, or you can talk to any single competitive 40k player, and they tell you about a time that they got to the hit stage, the wound stage, or whatever else, they roll 6 to, you know, 15 dice, and an overwhelming number of 1s and 2s show up. It is just really uncomfortable. And then the velocity trackers to shoot at things that have fly. There's plenty of things that have fly at the moment. And a decent number of them you're going to be shooting at with the, the broadside. So it just gives you something which is a little bit more value in the right circumstances. Because when I look at things like the heavy optics, it's great to not have that. But I'm picking mod car most games with the sort of list that I'm playing at the moment. And so the first three turns is when they're doing most of their setting up anyway. And I'm not actually putting them in positions where they're getting charged. I, I mean, my Riptides barely got charged, and they're the thing that I would kind of be a little bit more aggressive with if I could, uh, just because they're such a high-toughness platform. So all this means that I have something which is filling the role of the Riptides. They lose the Invulnerable save, but I can attach Marker Drones to them, I can attach Shield Drones, or they can take their Shield and Missile Drones. 
and I am able to benefit from light cover while having them fire six very good shots, which actually have basically the same damage floor as a Riptide with damage four because we have D3 plus three. So the minimum they can get is four damage. And then greater than that because they do a mortal wound on a successful wound roll. And they have a higher seal. Each rail gun can put out, oh, sorry, not each rail, heavy rail rifle that they're carrying uh, can put out seven wounds because you've got six wounds if you roll maximum for the shot and then you've got a mortal wound in addition. So when you've got six shots, which can potentially be seven damage each, well, I'll let you work out the mathematics on that in your head because it is obscene. Now, you're not going to get every shot through all the time and you're not going to roll maximum damage, so don't get caught in that headspace. But that gives you an idea of the same amount of points as a Riptide, what I can get out of that. Now, the downsides, obviously, I mentioned a little bit of it before. You are not getting fire and fade. They are not a jetpack unit, so you can't use the stratagem to have them strike and fade. They don't have anything built in on their own. They are very much broadsides, if you think about the old schooly, you know, ships that go up next to each other and slowly coast in and then just... like just unload on each other that is exactly what the broadsides are they are slow they are plodding they are something that i mean five inch move in mod car obviously we can advance and still fire which is great but there's still only five inches on their move so when it gets to turn four and five you're not able to do some of the objective stealing stuff that you're able to do with the riptides and this is something that i love that we're at the end of the edition because i can kind of just toy with whatever I want. And I was actually chatting with Alex about this yesterday, that now is the time for experimentation and just to kind of dick around on whatever list you want. And that it's really, really fun to be able to do that. And at the moment, neither of us are really worrying about ITC points because, well, we're about to hit 10th and none of it's going to matter in a couple of months anyway. So if you're wanting to run broadsides, the biggest piece of advice that I can give you is to think of your broadsides as the role that they are in. They are heavy support. They are not your carries. They are not going to overtake a game because at the end of the day, they're very slow. And we've seen what that's done with Votan, where a lot of their list is around stuff that can teleport or the bikes that can go obscenely fast. That's kind of how they win games. You do have people that are playing the warrior list where they're just, you know, the slow march of death, but they also auto advance eight any time that they move with those warriors. And they have other little tricks, they have vehicles, the Sagittors, the uh, the land fortresses, all that sort of thing. So it's not exactly the same kettle of fish, but we've seen some of the pain points with particularly slow armies. Even some of the Death Guard lists that I've seen do very, very well are very, very quick. They're using blight drones and all that sort of thing to be everywhere on the board that they want to. And so we're and then this is kind of a running theme for anything competitive. If you're wanting to play at a higher level, speed. Speed is everything. It wins games. Where the broadsides are able to forego that speed is that they have rail rifles that can go 60 inches. So if they can see, they can shoot. Now, the other problem with considering broadsides as anything other than heavy support is people that assume they're going to be able to shoot whatever they want at any point during the game. If you're playing against somebody who is leaving everything out to be shot in the open you're not playing a good player. You are, for all intents and purposes, seal clubbing. Because that person hasn't learned yet how to use terrain to their advantage. When you go up onto some of the top tables, you will have to fight for every angle that you get. But there is a lot of value in sitting a set of broadsides. I would I love the idea of even just setting them up on the just below the second floor of an easy to get to building, five inches from one floor to the other is not out of this realm. Put them up there so that as soon as they touch that, they're able to see through and they're benefiting light cover and all that sort of stuff as per area terrain rules, if you want to look those up in the uh, 40K core rules section. And then have them so that there is an enormous swathe of the board where even if I'm not shooting, people know that they can't move there. Area denial can be really, really great for winning games. And it doesn't always need to be about shooting everything and whatever else. And this is where I've seen people investing, you know, 800, 900 points of their list in broadsides 
yes, the SMS can hit out at decent ranges, I guess. It's not anything amazing. But I think that people fall into a trap of thinking they're going to be able to shoot all the time and the numbers are going to go in their favour because, I mean, of course they do. Without active experience on the board, our brains want us to succeed. Our brains want us to do well. And so when we look at the math hammer of all of this sort of stuff in a closed environment, we make ourselves think, oh, this will be really, really great. This will work. But as soon as, and actually this is something that was immediately taught kind of day one of when I joined the army. All of our best laid plans never survive contact with the enemy. And so this is where when I'm list building, I make sure that I am able to kind of react to whatever I need to do. And this is where the core of my list is still going to focus on Fisher Fury or Crisis or just things that are quick and able to move on to objectives, able to react to my opponent. But I've got these things sort of like Riptide. Riptides were able to move further, but I've got these things that are hardy and durable and can serve a purpose, even if it's area denial. If you go back and watch my Crude Hounds video, I talk about how a 24-point unit can disrupt hundreds of points of your opponent. But on paper, Crude Hounds look like crap. So that is sort of the sort of mentality that I would like all of you to look at broadsides as, that if you are wanting to use them as carry units, fine. Have a plan for the rest of the game. How you're going to score, how you're going to disrupt your opponent, and how you're going to maneuver out to objectives that could be very, very far away. Don't forget, Data Sprite Salvage exists. And you need to make sure that you've got a plan for that mission because my goodness, do I hate it every time I'm on it. Okay, so that is our video for today. If you would like to get access to the lists that I'm going to be running, don't forget that all of my chassos in the Patreon get access to my tournament lists whenever they like. So head over to the Patreon link, uh, have a look at the areas in which you can support me and joining our Patreon gives you immediate access to our Discord. On screen now will be all of my patrons who make all of these videos possible. Uh, I absolutely could not be doing this without them. I could not be looking at running an event without them. Uh, so all of this stuff is very, very exciting for me. And make sure you subscribe. There is uh, plenty of videos which are going to be coming out very, very soon. Uh, so make sure that you are around for everything Tau content. Thank you, Chassos, and I'll see you in the next one.